Hi. Since I wrote Horizon Wars, I often get asked at conventions and clubs and events what miniatures I recommend for playing the game. And the range of possibilities is absolutely enormous, but a key feature in the Horizon Wars game is, of course, the big stompy robot, the walking tank, the mech. Um, and I, although it, it's not essential to play the game, to have mechs, it's certainly a big part of the flavour of the game, is, is including these, uh, these classics of, of speculative fiction, uh, pushing it to call it science, I think, uh, speculative fiction, uh, to include them in the game. So what I've done today is I've assembled a selection of miniatures uh, that I consider to be good examples of miniatures you can include in the game. Now, I've gone out of my way, as you can see, not to put these miniatures together. I'm going to show you some photos from the manufacturers of completed examples of the miniatures, but what I'm going to look at is both the range of price and quality and different materials in which mechs are generally available. So I shall push these aside. Here's the first we're going to look at, and in fact, as you may notice already as I open the bag, this is not one mech, but three. Uh, these are Kirin mercenary mechs from Brigade models. They're quite a recent release from Brigade. Uh, and as you can see, they come in a pack of three that uh, Brigade call a Lance. Oops. And they are, each one is a simple three part miniature. So you've got one mech and two weapons. And the pack comes with three separate weapon types. We've got a Gatling cannon, some sort of energy weapon, and what looks more or less like a rail rifle. Um, so simple miniatures to make. They are they're sculpted in the six mil scale, although there's nothing about them that could stop them being smaller. They could be very big mechs in three mil or two mil, or they can just be relatively small mechs in six mil. Um, I would consider them in Horizon Wars to be sitting at around the Presence 1 sort of size, so right at the bottom of the scale of mechs, but uh, your mileage may vary. Um, these casts are a, a little flashy, um, as you can see, there's a, there's a little bit here, uh, flash that's going to need to be cut off, some has already fallen off the miniatures. The mould lines are relatively distinct, nothing that was going to be too difficult to get rid of, but they're, they're certainly visible here and there um, on the flat areas. There's nowhere though that the mould lines are going to present a problem cleaning them up. There's nothing of the detail that's being severely obscured, but it is across the top of the mech, across the missile pods and the shoulders, uh, it's certainly visible. Uh, I suppose to an extent I would say this set, this example that I've got here from Brigade Models is um, poorer than their usual casting quality, but only by a fraction. And you can also see in the, uh, the detail uh, the, the kind of, what's the word, the texture that we're getting on the surfaces here is kind of dimply. And that says to me, as I know, that these were designed as 3D models, they were then printed, they were then cleaned, and they were then uh, cast. And I know that the original design for these was intended to be 15 mil scale, so it's a, a good uh, nearly three times as large as these, and so that the detail has been substantially reduced for the benefit of casting at 6 mil. It's a nice little miniature, there is nothing wrong with it. You'll see that there are no bases included. But uh, if I show you an example of the assembled and painted Kirin mercenary mech from Brigade Models, you'll see that uh, basing these is, is no particular challenge. Now, the Kirin retail at £8 for three or $10.30 at current exchange rates, not including postage. Um, the style and technique of them is very realistic. That squat leg uh, with lots of clear suspension built into it, uh, a pilot's portal, no manipulator arms, there are two missile pods and two weapons, and a small machine gun of some sort, it looks like, on the front of the pilot's cockpit. So this is definitely a mech built with a more realistic um, vision of 
stompy robot walkers than a lot of manufacturers. So that's Brigade Models and the Kirin Mercenary Mech. £8 for three or $10.30. The next miniature we're going to look at is this one. This is from another UK company called the Ion Age. And uh, as you can see, came to me in a plastic bag. Just the one mech this time, much bigger than the Kirin. Let's have a look. So it comes as a body, two arms, two legs, and a pair of feet. Um, what's to say, uh, and a, a 50 mil base I should add as well, what's to say about this? Well obviously it's much larger than the Kirin but this is intended to be a 15 millimeter scale mech. There is nothing about it that means it couldn't run larger, it could quite comfortably be a sort of a war droid for 28 mil. Um, it could equally comfortably be a large mech at 6 mil or a really really large mech at even smaller scales. Uh, this particular mech comes in three versions. Uh, this version is the Alpha version, which comes with a cannon and a fist and, uh, and a pair of feet there. I'm pretty sure it must have fallen out of the bag somewhere. There is also a missile pod that comes with, with this piece. I'm sure it's, uh, it's in my collection somewhere, but it's been, uh, been mishandled. So there is a missile pod that comes with it, and we'll, uh, we'll see that in the photo of the assembled miniature in a minute. Uh, the Ion Age uh, Afara Strider is what this is, and this is the 26 Whiskey Alpha. Uh, I've also got a, a Charlie type, uh, but by and large, uh, this is what you see is what you get. It's a very retro style, both in terms of its styling and in terms of its sculpting method. You can see very clearly that this has been hand sculpted, probably in green stuff or similar modelling putty and then cast in white resin. The casting quality is very good. Um, there is a mould line, but it's not distinct. Very little flash, very little runoff. No visible casting gates that are going to need to be clipped away. Just standard cleaning up. Um, the 50mm plastic base is going to be one that we'll see again soon. I'm not sure who makes this base, actually. I must find out because I'm seeing it in a number of kits recently. And, uh, and that's, that's the Ion Age Afara Strider Mecca. This retails at £10 each. That's £10 for one or $12.88 uh, if you're in the US. Now let's have a look at a finished version of this Mecca from the manufacturer's website. And you can see here all three of the Afara Striders assembled and painted and looking gorgeous. The third mech we're going to look at is this one. Um, obviously in pieces it doesn't say a lot, but this is from Reaper Miniatures from their CAV Special Operations range. Now there's a lot of story behind CAV at the moment. Um, they've recently kick-started the CAV range um, into their plastic bones material. As you can see though, this is not the white bones material that we're used to from their fantasy range. Um, but rather a grey plastic. Uh, it comes as a body, two weapon pods, hips, pair of legs, a little basing piece and a plastic 30mm hexagonal base. Technically this is a 10mm mech. Uh, I would say that there is absolutely nothing about it that stops it counting as a 6mm mech. I think you'd be pushed to take it smaller because of the cockpit but it could conceivably go up as high as 10 or 12 mil. You could probably push it as a 15 mil battle suit to some extent, but again, you'd be pushing the limits of the scale because of the cockpit design. Uh, it is, this is a silverback from their cab range. Um, it's made from, not only is it quite a chunky style, but it's quite a chunky plastic material. Now, the last time I saw this, not, not in bones, um, but was actually in the uh, Privateer Press grind miniatures game when they tried out their plastic miniatures for the first time. They used this style of plastic and it had an identical system 
of locking points to make sure that you put the right pieces in the right place. And in fact, these locking points are so good that you can put this mech, he says confidently, you can put, oh, there we go, you can put this mech apart together quite easily without any glue at all. Uh, and it just goes on oops, like so. As you can see, there's the assembled mech. Doesn't need any glue. Um, well, I say it doesn't need any glue. It will stay together without glue. If you were going to build this and put this on the table, you'd certainly want some glue on it. Apart from anything, the weapon pods are not perfectly attached. Feet to go into that way around. Feet go into there, and it goes on the base. Um, I'm not going to make a point of assembling. I just wanted to show that uh, this particular miniature assembles really easily. Quality of casting is very hit and miss. There are very clear mould lines. Um, there's a casting gate uh, quite visible on the front here. You can actually see distortions in the plastic here. And on the backs of the missile pods, the plastic is quite clearly distorted. Um, whether that will clear up once it's painted, I'm not sure. Um, these miniatures retail at $5.99 each. That's £4.65, uh, not including postage. There is a good company in the UK called Miniature Heroes that does imports from the US and particularly imports Reaper miniatures. So if you're looking for this miniature in the UK, I would definitely start with miniature-heroes.co.uk. I'll stick a link in the notes to the video. And that's the Reaper Cav Silverback. Another plastic baggie full of bits. Now, I have to say, I, I have acquired all of these miniatures I'm showing you today through my sort of connections and contacts. So I don't know if they come off the shelves like this. I'm sure that some of them do, some of them don't. But here's a baggie of miniatures, and this one is from Warhanser. Warhanser is a US company, and it has a very extensive range of resin mechs that, as far as I can tell, are a bit of a labor of love for the owner behind Warhanser. Um, as you can see, they're resin, not plastic this time. This is a lovely white resin, very crisp detail. I'm guessing that, like the Kirin Walker, that these have been digitally sculpted rather than hand sculpted like the um, miniature from the Ion Age. As you can see, it comes in two arms, two legs, body and a clear plastic hexagonal base. And what I'd like to point out here is I showed you how the CAV model went together. Well, you've got a similar quality of fit on these. I just put, because I don't want to take the legs and arms off their sprues. You can see I've just pushed those into place now and that's holding in there really, really nicely. Um, need just a teeny touch of glue and that would be together permanently. There is a bit of flashing come off from the casting. As you can see, these are on sprues, so you want to cut these away. The mould lines are scarcely visible. Uh, there, there's very little to file away moulding wise. The casting quality here really is pretty good, even when you're looking at these very fine uh, pieces around the collar here and the detail around the head. This particular miniature is a King Arthur model Warhanser mech. Um, I, uh, I have also got my hands on one of their Hellscream 2 mechs. And this mech retails at $10 each, as do all the Warhanser mechs are one price. It's $10 each. Uh, for UK listeners, that's £7.77, not including postage. So that is Warhanser. Oh, I should have said, these are officially in a 1 to 285 to 1 to 300 scale. That roughly equates to 6 mil, but frankly, as it's an imaginary uh, giant stompy mech, uh, that's hardly relevant. And this is the last one we're going to look at. Now this one also comes in a plastic baggie. Unlike the others, I'm pretty certain that this is exactly how this one will be shipped to you. This is from the 6mm range of Mechafront. Now Mechafront is a game developed by John Paulson of Paulson Games. And he has developed a 15mm and 6mm miniatures range to support that game. Uh, now, if you saw my video looking at Super Heavies in Horizon Wars, you will already have seen a couple of John's 15mm sculpts, and these are the 6mm versions of the same miniatures. So straight away, we can see 
that this is a lot of parts uh, and these pieces are definitely parts for the hobbyist. I'm going to show you a completed version in a moment but as you can see we've got a body with a cockpit, we've got a set of hips, we've got a pair of legs, separate feet, one, two, then we've got a pair of shoulders, a pair of missile pods and a pair of long-barreled guns and a familiar looking 40 mil round base looks uh, from exactly the same manufacturer as the one that the Ion Age miniature came from. Um, as I say, I'll show you a completed version of this particular miniature and some others in a moment, um, but the casting on this really is extremely crisp. There are mould lines, uh, there are mould lines down the centre, but they're across flat spaces, very easy to do. There's a bit of flashing on the back of this one, but the detail on it is very crisp. These are all digitally sculpted by John Paulson um, and he again has had them printed, cleaned and cast but there's absolutely no evidence of the digital sculpting process um, unless you look really carefully you can just see the finest impressions um, that these are objects that have been built in layers in, in the, uh, the printing process but once it's painted it would be completely invisible. There's nothing here to betray its its origins as a digital sculpt at all. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of this particular range, but they're not cheap. The Mecha Front miniatures come in at twelve dollars each for the one that I'm showing you here. Their largest model, the Lynx, is fourteen dollars, and that comes in at nine pounds thirty-two for the example that you're seeing here, or ten eighty-seven for the Lynx. As a reward to you for making it all the way to the end of this video and this review of mech manufacturers, I want to tell you that I'm going to be giving some of them away. I have four of John Paulson's Mechafront 6mm mechs to give away, and I have one Cav Silverback to give away. So if you'd like to win one of these mechs, what have you got to do? It's really simple. All you've got to do is comment on this video and subscribe to the Precinct Omega channel. If you're already subscribing, fantastic. What I'll do once uh, this has been up for a little while is I'll look through all of the comments. I will then pick one at random and check whether they're a subscriber. If they are, they'll win a robot. And I'll keep doing that until all the mechs are gone. Uh, I, it is Today is the 4th of October, so I'm going to let this run until the 31st of October. That's right, Halloween. So on the 31st of October at midnight, the witching hour, I'll close this competition and at the beginning of November I will look through all the comments and see who I'm going to pick out to win some mechs and they will go anywhere in the world. You will of course have to let me know where you live so that I can put it in the post but I'll contact you privately and you can share your address with me if you want to receive a mech. You don't want to get one? That's absolutely fine. You don't have to comment or if you want to comment but you don't want a mech just say so in the comments and I won't trouble you uh, to share with me your address. So thanks very much for listening all this time. I've got five mechs looking for new homes, so comment below the video and I look forward to sending you some free stuff in the post.